so much energy. Oh, welcome to your Friday happy hour, Cheeky Tunes happy hour. We look forward to this every single week. If you're watching us live on Facebook and you're wondering what on earth is going on, how do I get in there? Awesome, what a start to the show. So much energy. Oh, welcome to your Friday happy hour, Cheeky Tunes. Was that you, Claudia? Sorry, what did I do? I just heard a crazy echo. Oh, maybe. Oh, <laughs> it's fine. It's good that you're checking that we're live because oh. otherwise we'd be wasting our time. <laughs> oh, me, what a producer, hey. Oh, gosh. Sorry. <laughs> How are you going, you Daniel? Me? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. This is Daniel Bader, everyone, a sensational drummer, obviously. He's also the former band lead at Cirque du Soleil. That's like incredible. What a what a thing to put on your resume. Like, um, what was that like for you? Yeah, it was uh, a very nice experience. I quit in 2016. Oh, sorry, 17. And uh, it was amazing. It was, um, you know, being a band leader for such a company that, you know, it's the second uh, biggest company of entertainment in the world. So it's a quite <laughs> experience. <laughs> Absolutely. I can't wait to learn more about that as well. And Daniel's coming to us live from Tokyo in Japan. Amazing. I love the way we go around the world every Friday just for one cheeky hour. And Laurie Ellen is with us here in Perth. Hi. Laurie. Hi. Hey, Hi, how are you? I'm good. How has all the response been since you dropped your um, your new video clip on YouTube? Good. Yeah, the, the views are bouncing all over the place. I'm checking different devices. One saying 2000 and something, another one saying 800. So who knows? <laughs> but it's been in a week, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, but you must be getting right. amazing feedback from people. It's very exciting. Definitely, yeah. We're going to do three covers, uh, yeah, three covers with film clips, and then start on originals. So I'm pretty pumped for them. Amazing! It's all just beginning the serious fun for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> just at the beginning. It is. We've got Estella coming in too. That's Claudia's mum from Brazil. Claudia is our producer. She works very hard to create our Cheeky Tunes happy hour every Friday from Sweet Cheeks Wear. How are you going? What was your week like, Claudia? Yeah, I mean, let's just put it out there. My week was light compared to what's been going on around the world that we cannot actually forget at all. Like, you know, I'm sure everybody has been following the news as we should and, uh, you know, the all, all the, you know, the situation in, in the US and, and, you know, the protests and this whole you know, horribleness about racism and, and really heavy conversations that we want to forget on our Friday night, of course, but the truth is we can't really forget any of that. And in Brazil at the moment, for example, we, we've, we've heard, and my mom is over there, that at the moment COVID-19 related deaths are one per minute. So that's, you know, pretty heavy. But um, I guess, and I actually thought about, shall we have a happy hour? Shall we not have a happy hour? And, and uh, some musicians around the world actually did, were really encouraging of the Blackout Tuesday, for example, and uh, including, for example, Mick Jagger, let's say. And, uh, and, and, and I thought, you know, whew, what do we do, you know? And then I thought, you know what? I think uh, we all do our, our thinking and, and, and in our own time and with, we've been following the whole thing anyway and I thought let's just keep our, our little conversations and Daniel is a very passionate uh, Brazilian citizen who lives in Japan and I've actually watched his lives talking about the circumstances and I think drums at the moment they actually drive this energy that we need to really you know tap into this um yeah, this, this energy that we need to do to rethink leadership. And because he was a band lead for a circus, you know, let's just put it like that, Cirque du Soleil, right? I thought, you know what, that makes a lot of sense. I'm sure the band lead of a circus would have a lot to contribute to a moment where we are thinking about poor leaderships or good leaderships around the world. So some of us are luckier than others. I suppose that here in Australia, in general, things are a little bit more under control. So hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll have live gigs again. 
but yeah so that's it so my week has been that there you go prolix lots of talking <laughs> yeah but i really appreciate you taking us there for a moment just to pay our respects as um it's just been a really huge week and so mm. yeah just a little yeah. bit mind-blowing i've got a few friends in america i've been talking to this week and um yeah. lots of marching down uh past their front doors and things like that so yeah um, I think it's uh, really, uh, you know, we must stop and um, and think of everyone. Um, yeah. I've, we've got Berenice McCarthy who's popped in to say hello as well. And mm -hmm. Estella Rondon, lovely to see you again. Um, how have you been? Oh, she's frozen. In Her internet sometimes comes and goes. I know. Um, I'm looking forward to learning more about Estella tonight because she's been teaching since she was in her 20s and has done public speaking across Brazil, UK and India. And I think we should have a chat tonight about the transition to the online world when it comes to our young'uns and the teaching of. Um, and Daniel, of course, you're going to grace us with some more of your tunes. And if we can catch our resident muso, Nikki D'Agostino, also known as Little Miss Squeezebox, be sure to check her out on social media. She gets up to all sorts of adventures. And tonight she is out on the streets here um, in Perth in a suburb called Leaderville. Because here in Western Australia, we've now, uh, tomorrow, I'm actually going to the pub with the school mums because we can do 100 people in one space. Um, so restrictions are lifting um, as we speak pretty much. And I think that's why Nikki's out um, doing real live music tonight. So <laughs> hopefully um, we, we catch up with her as well. Um, Daniel, what is your second song for tonight? I got a, a song called Divagar from Bruce Scott. That's, um, it's in um, Vera Figueiredo, Island Magic Book, um, uh, Vera Figueiredo uh, Island. It's um, it's a very very nice tune. Difficult to play for me because divagar means um, is slow, but uh, it's not slow. It's very fast. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it's a very very nice tune to start. And um, you know, she was a very uh, inspiring inspiration for me uh, since I was a. Uh, uh, 12 years old, I started uh, making classes with her, and uh, until nowadays, I kind of, you know, uh, consulting her here and there to learn more, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank okay. you. I would love to hear it. Thank you. All right, let's go. <laughs>
love it. That's full of energy. Uh, that's what just what you needed, Claudia. No, you know, boom. <laughs> oh, she's ready to go for another week. <laughs> Wakes you up, you know, <laughs> to everything so, you need to wake up to. Oh, yeah. Amazing. So, Daniel, since uh, 2017, when you left Cirque du Soleil, what have you been doing since then? And how has this period of isolation affected those plans? Uh, well, I had, um, <clears throat> I had to learn this song. You know? <laughs> I have that all these years. But uh, I'm here for three years now. And uh, I've been playing... Uh, you know, making my life as a musician. And with this COVID thing, it's like uh, everything stopped. And I had to improvise and be, and be, I became a YouTuber, you know, those kind of things that every musician, you know, are trying to, to make it. And um, uh, it's kind of difficult, but I, I cannot complain because I'm a really lucky guy because I have all the equipment that was uh, at the right time, at, you know, Kind of thing, and and I've been collaborating with so many friends, and and uh, I work as a you know a recording engineer as well, a mix engineer, so I can you know uh, do a lot of stuff, uh, and keep keep the music going for this uh, awful time that we are passing through. I know, and and, uh, and Daniel, I I mean, uh, like like I mentioned, uh, we in Australia we're going through this. Uh, reopening phase so much like Fiona said 100 people in bars uh, here in Sydney in certain venues you can have 80 people 10 people per area and uh, yoga schools gyms they will be opening for 10 people uh, next week and that means for some businesses that they're not sure if they can afford or not to reopen in, in those circumstances anyway but in general things are the 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 uh, the climate is positive, let's say here. Uh, but in Japan, you guys had a second wave, didn't you? So how how did that happen? So you you were like so you set yourself up on online online to to do your gigs and everything, and then things were starting to open. But can you tell us a little bit of how you managed all of it in the second sort of mm, wave? The second wave, yeah. Uh, we had a second wave. What I I would call third wave because you know. Uh, they were kind of opened um, before they announced the cancel uh, of the Olympics Games. They were totally open and the thing was going on. And then, uh, you know, we had like a, a three kind of waves going on. And of course, they weren't testing at the time mm -hmm. um, as much, you know. Uh, the thing is, yeah, I had some gigs for July, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, and they were cancel again, so oh okay mm. yeah so they are kind of okay uh, that we are not ready yet you know yeah but it, it's funny to observe that uh, when I go you know to the supermarket and come back because I it's just that you know like for us as you yeah. know so it's like I see a lot of people on the streets and they are having fun you know because they are not working <laughs> it's it's crazy yeah. I don't know how they're doing. But it, it feels like a holiday to them, you know. Uh, in Japan, and, do you get a support package from the government just like we do in Australia or yes. like we have Job Keeper and Job Seeker? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's different for, for musicians because it's an outlet. So it's like what makes you whole uh, to be able to play for people and get smiles and applause, you know. So I think it's really hard to get around that. Yeah, it's a terrible thing uh, for art in general and uh, for entertainment, artists, uh, painters, uh, everybody's suffering, you know, like uh, uh, the technicians, I think, are the worst because they cannot do what we are doing. Like I can turn on a camera and play, but mm -hmm. they work like as a sound, sound engineer behind the scenes, like uh, with the live, uh, you know, they, they cannot do those kind of things. I think for them, it's, it's even worse, you know, like... Um, but for musicians, what I what I think is the worst part of this kind of enclosurement, I don't know how to call it in English, but like uh, we cannot play together with another person. You know, like this, huh. this is we are playing with the playbacks and we know everything that it's going to happen with the music. You know? mm -hmm. But when you're playing live, you have the interaction and, and this I, I kind of, you know, miss a lot. 
Yeah, of course. Hey, quick one. Uh, I'd love to show you Laurie Ellen's YouTube clip um, that she just came out with recently. Yeah. And your tips logo in the bottom left there, how does that work? Oh, you just, uh, you know, go there, uh, turn on your uh, camera on your mobile and 